Hello everyone. Welcome to Selenium Training by Wisdom Trainings. And today we will be covering a very important topic of Selenium that what is Selenium web driver and what are the components of Selenium. Okay? If you have any doubts regarding the video or the course, you may go over the website over here in the free video section and drop your doubts or questions over the speak your mind section. Okay? Now when I talk about what is Selenium, so if I'll just take you to the official website of Selenium, that is selenium.dev and over here when you can see over the side, the first thing that catches your eyes is that Selenium automates browser that defines that Selenium is an automation testing tool which is specially meant for browsers means this selenium is not available to test your you to automate your test cases over your desktop based applications or windows based application okay plus this is an open source part and it can it can work on different browsers if i'll go over here in the download section and i'll take you a little down so you can see over here in the browsers, you'll be able to see that it's available for Firefox, Internet Explorer, Safari, Opera, Chrome Edge, right? So there, it, the Selenium is supported by different browsers and you can automate your browser, whichever you want. Okay. Now this was about what actually the Selenium is and what is the definition of it. Now over here you can see that Selenium is available with the different languages. It can be done it can be used with ruby java python c sharp javascript right so according to the requirement you can get that selenium in our system now if i talk about the evaluation of selenium that how it evolved to the recent version you can see that the stable versions are written over here that which is the stable versions so you can see it's giving me 3.14 1.0 so we'll get to see that how it has reached this level what was the evaluation so for that if i'll go to the screen so over here if i talk about the evaluation the very first version of selenium that was available was selenium rc okay now this when we talk about selenium rc there are some different things that selenium rc could do we'll talk about that but along with that selenium rc we were having two different tools as well if i'll talk about both of them the first tool that we have with selenium was ide now when i talk about this ide this is a tool which is supported by mozilla it is supported by mozilla only but the issue with this ide was that it was not able to generate any reports so it was not able to generate any reports if you even have some test cases of around 5000 or more so it will not help you to do that but still it's existing and this tool is still available till this time also along with this tool there was another tool if i talk about that as well that is my grid okay so when i talk about this grid this grid is a tool which is used for parallelly running your test cases in different systems okay now for suppose let's just suppose that this is my main machine and along with this machine main machine i have some different local machines which have some test cases written over them and they are working on different browser let's say it's working on mozilla okay let me just say this is on mozilla chrome this is on internet explorer and this is on edge okay and i want to run them parallelly at single time so how i can do that i can simply just connect this main machine with all the local machines and i'll set the browser names that which browser name is running on which system and i can simply run this grid okay this tool is very much useful when you have to test different test cases lying on different machines at different locations at that time this grid is very much useful okay now coming back to the very first thing that we were discussing the selenium rc the first thing that i want to tell you that this the selenium rc is now outdated it's not in use now but there was some features which it was able to perform now if i talk about them 
first of all it was able to write some dynamic scripts right it was able to write some dynamic scripts and also it can support multiple browsers if you have different test cases on different browsers this selenium rc was able to support it along with the support of different programming language i'll write it in short form you can write dynamic scripts if in different languages like if i say you can write it in java in python in c sharp ruby in many more like etc you can write all of the dynamic scripts in all these languages which were available at that time okay the thing was so this was what selenium rc was able to do but due to the time being updated the selenium developers get with a new version but it's not a replacement it's not being replaced or being migrated to the next version it's totally different and the thing that evolved after some time was the web drivers if i'll write it down it was web driver 2.0 okay now if i talk about 2.0 this is not a migration as i told you it's not a migration of selenium rc it's a totally different thing this web driver 2.0 has different compounds totally different from that of selenium rc if there is a person who is aware of selenium rc and has worked with it that person will find some difficulty to work with selenium 2.0 and the same way if some person is known with the selenium uh, web driver 2.0 and is very much known about it so that person will find difficulty to understand selenium rc code okay so it's totally different and rest features that selenium rc was providing it's actually the same you can write dynamic scripts multiple browsers are supported by it all of these, these things are same okay so i'll write it down for the time being i'll say it can write dynamic scripts as well with different commands okay along with that support to multiple browsers scripts in different programming languages okay along with this web driver 2.2 it was an development by the developers of selenium that it can also be an version okay along with this 2.0 this id is still available if i talk about this ide tool it's still available nowadays but being it supports mozilla only so that's why it's not that much in use but it's still available if you want to work with it you can okay same way if you talk about grid the grid also got updated to grid 2. Point, grid 2 you can say okay so if i'll say okay now this grid 2 is also available and i'll name it like grid 2 it is just an updated version of grid but the use is absolutely the same but with some modified commands okay after the selenium 2.0 something new happened and it was the update in web driver 2.0 that is web driver 3.0 okay web driver 3.0 and this web driver 3.0 is absolutely like the web driver 2.0 just with some revised commands it has some revised commands and has a different or i can say it has more flexibility towards the commands okay i just can say it's a revised version okay and similarly if i talk about the ide and grid so ide is still available nowadays also it's available but due to the glitch that i told you it's not in that much use and also when i talk about grid it got updated to grid 3 okay so this is how the grid has been oh sorry the selenium has been evolved by time by the recent times we are working with version 3.0 and in the course also we'll be working with the recent version that is web driver 3. 
one for one point zero. That is the Selenium version that I have told you, right? So we'll be working with that particular version in our course. Now we will be discussing the architecture of Selenium and how is this web driver and all is going to work. So we'll be looking at that now. If I'll take you back at this Selenium official website and I'll take you to the API docs. Over here, the detailed information about Selenium is provided. You can go through that as well. But what I want to show you over here is the drivers part. That these are the driver classes. If you are working with some of the browser, you need to have the driver classes in your system. If you want to work with Chrome, you need to inform the driver class and then you will be able to work with this Chrome. Okay. And to get these driver classes in your system, you need to get them downloaded in the system. You can see over here, the links are given. If I click on one of the links, so you can see it will take you to the downloads part of, down, uh, of Chrome driver. And according to your Chrome version, sorry, if according to the Chrome version, you can check the version from here by these three dots you can download the driver class from here okay don't worry we'll be discussing about how we can download all the driver classes in our system so don't worry about it just for the sake of information if you want to interact with the browser so you need to have these driver classes in your system okay you can see over here the example as well that a simple code has been written that browser is equals to webdriver.firefox now this web driver is an interface which is having more than sufficient functions to work with all the browsers. I'll show you how you can do that. I'll show you which functions I'm talking about. So it's simply giving the URL that which URL it wants to open. Okay. We'll discuss it. Just give me a moment. I'll come back to it. Before that, you can see over here that in the drivers class list, there are drivers there are browsers chrome edge firefox safari now when i talk about safari or opera opera is also available if you want to see the documentation the opera is also available but we do not prefer working with them because they are little unstable and they do not work with simple codes they need some complex codes to be tested on it okay so we do not prefer going on the most frequently used are the chrome edge firefox and the Internet Explorer. Okay, so these are the, some of the things that I wanted to inform you. Now, if I take you to the Eclipse to show you that which functions this interface is providing. So, let's go. Now, over here in the Eclipse, what I'll do is that I have already packages made. So, I'll just will make a new module by the name WebDriver Demo. Okay, this is just for the sake of demonstration. We'll work out the main code in the next video where we'll be configuring our Selenium code, uh, Selenium with our Eclipse and also installing the driver classes in our systems. Okay, now when I say that I want to work with WebDriver, I need to get my Selenium downloaded in my system. Okay, so if I'll go back and I'll show you that from where you can get your selenium so we are working with python over here so i'll go to download option and you can see it's giving you the command pip install selenium now you can use this command on your command prompt we have already discussed about this pip that what is this pip and if you want to install any of the library or package which is not already installed so you can simply go to your command prompt and you can run it as administrator so now I'll just will simply have to give the command that is shown over the official website. I'll say pip install selenium. Okay. Now, as soon as I'll press enter, it will start collecting all the related documents and necessary files that can be worked with selenium. So, I'll press enter. I already have selenium in my system. So, it's saying requirement already satisfied. But when you will be downloading it for the first time, it will collect it and will inform you that the installation is successful. To confirm it, you can also use the command pip list 
and in this pip you in this list you can search for selenium and the version will also be informed to you okay now when i talk about working with web drivers so i'll go over here in my eclipse and i'll say i want to work with selenium it's an import it's an external package so i need to import it in my module so i'll say from or import import selenium okay now when i have to work with i need to automate some browser right let's for the sake of information i'm saying don't worry we'll be discussing about this in detail in the coming videos just to show you the architecture i'm making it okay so i'll make an variable and this variable is an object of the interface that i have told you the web driver right so this is my interface i'll import it if you have already imported it so you can remove your import statement and as soon as you will press dot it will pop up with an help box as it does in eclipse and you can see over here that it is giving you a number of options over here it's giving you chrome chrome options edge firefox firefox options profile okay you can see this as much as i told you opera so opera is not in that much used but if you have a very complex code then you can go for trying with it okay likewise if i'll take you to the chrome okay and now i'll press enter so over here you can see as soon as i press enter oh sorry dot it gives you the help box now you can see that there are so many generic functions that are available you can add some cookies you can get some capabilities you can close a driver or command you can execute you can delete you can find some element that is available on the web page okay so this is a generic function the web element is a generic function which is having all the required functions that we need to work with browser is it the same like the web driver now if i talk about the architecture the architecture is going like this if i'll just clear this part i'll remove it and i'll say this is my selenium code somewhere okay over my eclipse my selenium code is right so i'll say i'll my this is my selenium code okay and somewhere between i have my driver classes i'll say these are my driver classes and what we need to automate is some browser so there is my browser now when i talk about browser browsers have some different language which is understood by their driver classes only so if i talk about mozilla so the driver class that understands the browser mozilla is geeko driver okay this is my driver class for mozilla similarly like if i have chrome that it will be chrome driver for edge different languages okay so for specific browser we need to have specific driver class and how it's interacting from the selenium code it's going to the driver class and from the driver classes by understanding the language of browser it is moving further to the browser okay this is how the structure is going if i'll show you like this this is how the structure is going you can see this is the architecture the real flow of work that will be going on while we will be working with selenium and web driver okay rest will be covering in the next video that how we can configure selenium code how we can configure the selenium in our eclipse and how we can install the driver classes and start working with them and can automate some of the browser of any of the browser you can see till the time 
you can read the api docs over here you can go to the selenium official website and from here if you want to go over here you can simply read the api docs so that you can understand more new things okay thank you and